Welcome to Recovery His Way on the campus of His Way here in Huntsville, Alabama. Glad to have you join us today. We've been on a series um, discussing the 12 steps, the 12 steps of AA that Bill Wilson um, created initially and that have been guiding principles to AA. And we've looked at how those steps relate to scripture and, uh, and we've discovered that. And we've been talking to a number of individuals who have worked those steps, walked those steps from a Christian point of view and have experienced um, God's outworking of those steps in the recovery. Today we have Todd Stewart with us. Todd's a graduate of His Way, an employee here now, works alongside of us. Todd, good to have you. Thank you. Good to be here. Um, I'd love for you to, I mean, I've had the opportunity to journey with you through this whole uh, adventure for the last, I don't know, year and a half, two years, whatever it's been. And uh, obviously our audience hasn't heard your story, so maybe if you could take a few minutes and guys share with us um, the Todd Stewart journey a little bit so we understand kind of where God has intersected and worked in your life. Okay. Um, well, um, I came to his way uh, January 21st of 2020. Um, I, I guess I'll kind of go back a little bit. I had, um, I was doing an outpatient and some guys there is, is how I got here. But um, I, um, I guess for me, um, I kind of I was in a, an abusive household when I was young, and um, um, I only I remember a little bit, you know, little things here and there, and um, I just I just you know later on in life I realized that um, these things that happened was like best of my memory started when I was five, and. Um, it kind of, as the from, from five to thirteen, it kind of set me on a, a kind of a different path than what you probably say the a normal childhood might be, mm -hmm. and uh, so that path early on kind of, you know, when when I first um, uh, was experimenting and tried uh, drinking, smoking pot, that kind of thing um, at thirteen, fourteen. Uh, immediately I thought well this is great if I have this for the rest of my life I can handle anything I can go through anything mm -hmm. because it was immediately um, you know a, a, for me a, like a medication for uh, going out and, and, and being around people dealing with people on what I saw or thought at the time was a you know normal Kind of, you know, mm -hmm. feeling normal, mm -hmm. and uh, but anyway, that was early on, and and um, I guess the first time I overdosed, I was seventeen, and um, that was when I was first put into treatment, and um, I from you know from then on, it's kind of it's it's been the same story, just. It's like a tape stuck on repeat. Mm -hmm. From then on, it was um, uh, I never I never could stay without mm -hmm. something. And uh, you know, if, as I got older, different substances came into my life that that I learned to depend on that made me feel okay out in the world as mm -hmm. it was in my life. You know and um, I just stuck to that and really, e even though th there's, there was, there was numerous overdoses, um, through the years, um, uh, numerous accidents, uh, I've had emergency heart surgery, broken my neck, uh, both my legs, both my hips and, um, because of accidents, because of the substances and, it's just been a a constant, the same old thing over and over from that early age to, like I said, when I got here. Mm -hmm. So you you went through these experiences and you had various times of recovery, though. I mean, you pursued recovery at um, some point through that time. I did. I, I never could get past like the six seven month mark. Mm -hmm. I would get two or three months here. Sometimes go back. Um, the most, like I said, I've ever gotten as far as being abstinent was six, seven months, maybe. 
uh, ever. What, until what I got do you here. think? Yeah. What do you think drew you back? Typically, why was it always hard to go longer than say six or seven months? Well, um, looking back, I'm not really sure. Other than um, me feeling so uncomfortable, mm -hmm. um, and and I mean uncomfortable with myself, my surroundings, with other people, with um, dealing with other people, just you know, life in general, uh, the, uh, there was depression, there was suicide attempts, mm -hmm. several. Yeah, it's amazing when you come out of the family you came out of, you know, that early on in life, just because of some of that upbringing, those values of insecurity and, and insufficiency and, you know, all those um, things kind of are embedded in you almost from your upbringing. And it's hard to overcome those things. I mean, it's well, with Very me different. looking back, it's it's um, I see where this this individual I became from that age, four or five years old, when this abuse began, when I had a step parent come into my life. Um, it you know this molded this child mold, it was I was molded a certain way, mm -hmm. and and it and I knew it, there was. You know, right and wrong. I knew that, that it was wrong what happened, but it, it still made me become this individual as a result of what was done. Right, 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 right. And then drugs and alcohol and those kind of things. It kind of kind of become a coping mechanism to deal with those insecurities and trying to. You know, it almost, in some ways, probably you're feeling like you're less than what everyone else seems to be. And if I can just smoke pot or take a pill or do this, it kind of gets me back up with other people. But then, obviously, that has um, is fraught with all kinds of there's no, there's no success whatsoever in it. I mean, I've had small amounts of success as far as some uh, back, you know, before everything went uh, digital and in photography. I I was a photographer. I did a lot of lab work, darkroom work, and um, I worked for for different. Um, labs from uh, from East Tennessee to Los Angeles, California, and all points in between, mm -hmm. because you know I could make it maybe nine, ten months, and I, but I would be kind of functioning with what I was taking mm -hmm. or drinking, and mm -hmm. but then it would come a point where I couldn't hide it anymore. I had already I had messed it up, and I and I would just move. Mm -hmm. Right, and it's been a, a move, you know. I've often wondered from first grade to sixth grade. You know, I never went to the same grade twice. It was always we moved every mm -hmm. year. Different schools, mm -hmm. yeah, and it kind of followed me into. It followed me that yeah. moving, right, right, right. But for different reasons. Like I said, as I got older, it was because people were finding out there's something wrong with Todd, so I'd move. Right, right. I got you. I understand. So you're always kind of running away from yourself, which is hard to escape. Uh, to <laughs> because me, you keep, with get, me. You keep <laughs> yeah. catching up with you. Yeah. Um, so take us up to, so that's your upbringing. Take, you, take us up to what happened that prompted you to come to his way and what kind of your experience has been here. Well, um, as far as finding out about his way, and that was a result of I was doing uh, uh, outpatient like three nights a week, the uh, Thrive has a program they call the Den mm -hmm. uh, that that would meet three nights a week and and I couldn't you know and they of course would do your analysis um, every so often and I could not um, stay successful there mm -hmm. and at the same time you know I was living with uh, my brother who's the only uh, member left of my immediate family and um, it was harder there to, to have any success with it. And um, so they were kind of trying to help me. Mm -hmm. So they were looking around and, and they knew, they knew of his way. And, and so they're the ones who reached out to his mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. And and they're the ones who actually brought me here. And as you know, my first family meeting, it was a counselor at Thrive that came. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And they've been great family and support to you, I know, in your early years here. So it's been a couple of years since you've been here, a little longer. Mm -hmm. um, what 
So this is probably the longest stint of sobriety you've had. Oh, it has been amazing because uh, January 21st, I was, I was pinching myself thinking about two years, you know, with no chemicals to, to feel differently, to, to cope, you know, it's just, it's been a miracle for right, me. Right. Well, what is it that happened during that period of time that has led to the stability and stuff? What do you think have been the key ingredients for you? Well, um, immediately, you know, coming to his way, it was, um, um, it, it immediately put me in a position that I, I had to think about God and what um, uh, Jesus Christ did for me personally. And I had to take that personal. And uh, I had never taken that personally. I've been taught and things and, you know, everything. And I was just not the one, you know, I couldn't be not, not what I, how my family was and, the person I've turned out to be, there's mm -hmm. no way. Mm -hmm. But er, the first month here, um, something happened, and it's uh, it 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 made me internalize and really um, come to a belief that I was Jesus did that for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to. It, it just I, I had to come to that point and here because of, you know, the classes, what we talk about every day, my environment, people like you, Stuart, everybody here, uh, Daryl, uh, Jeremy early on, um, everybody has really that first month, six weeks um, through our conversations, you know, it's, it's about God and, and what Jesus did for me and how, it made me realize you know how i wanted to live my life and and try this the chemicals you know up till 57 years old from 14 had got me the same results every time mm -hmm. even though i i try something different think well it'll be different this time this i'll be able to do never worked out that way it's always like na says jails institutions are death mm -hmm. That's the outcome, and mm -hmm. it was always that way for me. Of course, I hadn't reached the death yet, but I've been fortunate. Um, but I think the environment, the 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 people, had all got me to a point that um, uh, I took that personal what mm -hmm. Jesus did, and you know the the there was I came to you. I think probably my second week, third week here, and. Um, I asked you, Tom, what if I took a, the what little bit of money that I have in my uh, account here? Uh, what if I ask you for it and and you know to, to leave and what what would you say if I asked you that? And you told me I'd ask you well, why did you come here? And uh, that just made me start thinking about why I came here mm -hmm. and. It, it really helped me to um, help me to stay that first month mm -hmm. that it was kind yeah. of long. that first period can be really difficult so it can be a real radical time because you're getting exposed to a lot of new things having to confront a lot of new things having to look at yourself in the mirror and for me I was constantly pulled because of all I had ever known it's hard to break away from right. all you ever known sure. for so many years sure because it's not just the 43 years of substance abuse that you've been a part of but it's Everything since I was five years old that's been instilled in me in terms of my identity, my, percep my perception of myself, how I saw life, and those kind of things, it's all being radically challenged and changed during this process. Mm -hmm. the, the thing we're talking about, um, the topic particularly for today in the mm -hmm. 12 steps, is the sixth step, which um, says you know, that we're entirely ready um, to have God remove all these defects of character. Um, and so I'm interested in kind of your thoughts and how that step has been significant in this journey for you. This idea that, you know, you're coming to a point of being willing, ready to let God that you're kind of, we're talking about earlier, that you're kind of starting to surrender to here, um, remove these defects of character. So maybe you can share with us kind of how that step has impacted your journey. 
Um, well, uh, I, you know, when you told me that, that, that this was some part of the subject matter or mm -hmm. the subject matter on, on this today, I, uh, the first thing I, I wanted to do, I, I Googled character and, and I got the mental and moral qualities distinctive to an individual similar to personality disposition. Mm -hmm. And I look, I Google defect of character, which is any type of imperfection in the way a person thinks or behaves. Mm -hmm. And I thought I was thinking about myself. And um, for me, um, it was a, it's been a hard road till I got to his way. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have. I felt I feel like I, I was kind of beat down. I was pretty beat down when I got here. Mm -hmm. um, um, and I, due to, um, like I said, we talked about that first month and, and kind of getting where I could think clearly a little bit, even though I, I'm still challenged with that today, I feel like <laughs> sometimes, but, um, the, for me, it's been where there, there's, um, I, I still had hope when I got here, but. I didn't, couldn't imagine how it could happen. Um, but I, the, that sixth step, I think for me was, had, had, had taken, uh, you know, almost uh, maybe half a lifetime or more to, to get to a point where um, I could do that. What part, I mean, half a lifetime, what took you half a lifetime? What part of this takes half a lifetime for you? For, for me, it was like you said a minute ago, from that early age, I had this, I, that I was me. I, I, I was this result of, of that early age uh, mm -hmm. environment. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, that that was normal. That was what I was going to hang on to. That was, in a in a crazy sense, it was my security because it was all I had known. It would have been instilled in me. Right. So I fought fought with anything. That, even though the the overdoses, where the drugs took me, mm -hmm. the jails, mm -hmm. even the, even though that it it, it, it was at a point. For me, that I would, you know, it was so that what was been instilled in me was my normal, and it's like I fought tooth and nail right. with anything trying to change that the fact that I found these chemicals that makes that go feel different, that go away. Right. It's it's interesting that you were just pointing out, um, you know, that these defects of character um, are security have been security blankets for you, right? They've been part of what have been your coping techniques, your coping mechanisms, your identity, and those kind of things have been these defects of character. So it's hard for us to want to relinquish them because it's kind of like, you know, give, get, you know, getting the blanket from Linus. I mean, it's kind of that becomes our security blanket. And, and so it's hard to let go of those things because even though they may be defective, they're all I know and they've all I found comfort in. And so, you know, to be stripped of that security and to trust something else is a scary thought, right? It is. It's made me, you know, it, it makes me think, well, who am I if I, if I, if I don't have that? Right, right. Because, yeah, your identity where, where, gets wrapped Where do I go now? What mm -hmm. do I do now? Yeah. Right, right. Exactly. This I know. Right, right. Yeah. So so how do, what does it take to, to be willing to give up those securities and to make this move to letting God be willing? Because I, I sense here in a, a sense that in this step, God's willing but I'm unwilling, right? I'm hanging on to these defects of character because they're my security. I'm the thing I'm, I'm kind of finding comfort in and, and support in, and it's so much of my identity. How do I relinquish those things to God to let him begin to do something? So where, where has that happened in your life and how have you handled that? What's it taken to give, give up those securities? Well, uh, you know, like I've, I've said before, coming to his way, the, I feel like now, looking back, um, God has worked through people, you know, in, in my heart, and, and God has worked through the people in His way, who gave me um, an environment, gave me uh, some guidance 
on just making me comfortable enough to say it's okay to be this way. You know, bringing this stuff to the light, you know, uh, it was, was big for me. You know, letting people know here, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. And, and y'all not blinking an eye and saying, that's fine. And let's work with that. Mm -hmm. And God through y'all here, there, the, his way, um, everybody here has been, um, I think a big turning point in my life. Yeah. I think what you're saying, I think this is an interesting principle because, um, so much of these defects of character are what we kind of shelter in, in the darkness. We hold on to in kind of the shadows of our lives and simply being in an environment that's accepting, loving, um, willing to accept Todd for who he is, that Todd can kind of put those things out into the light, bring them from the shadows into the light and let them be exposed for what they are becomes a part of the process by which God begins to remove those defects of character, right? Right. Um, it's not any kind of magic thing that God waves a wand. It's just simply exposing them to the light and letting the light shine on them does amazing things to begin to disempower them, to um, to begin to transform them in this environment of acceptance and love and affirmation um, that you find within a community such as this, or obviously specifically in your relationship with God. Yes, the here is a big thing. And, and I know I've come to believe this to be true, and I know it has been in my life, is, you know, if I, if I make that step, if I, if I do that thing that scares me to death by, by you know, like I said, bringing, saying, here I am, mm -hmm. this is who I am, mm -hmm. this is, how I, this is what, how I think about this or that, this is how, you know, this is me, and mm -hmm. just being coming to that point, which part of that was out of desperation that I did it. I don't know, you know, I know where the other stuff is going to take me. Mm -hmm. I've got to do something here. Um, so that that's led, led me to, to see uh, firsthand that God says you know, to me, Todd, take the step that scares you. I, I'll do the rest. Mm -hmm. And it's been that it's been true for me and everything I have um, done here, the success I've had at his way, the saving way has been uh, taking that step that scares me to death. And God, you know, meets me halfway and grabs my hand. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's kind of how it's been for me. Yeah, this step is really just about being willing, ready, yeah, um, that, open to it. And I had to be, I was one of those that had to it really, I feel like, be beat down, mm -hmm. you know, by life. And one of my favorite verses is John sixteen thirty three. In me you will find peace in the world tribulation. Mm -hmm. Be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. Right, right. For me, that's been um, how it's been is, is it's, it's, it's it's been nothing but tribulation the mm -hmm. way I've lived mm -hmm. and the things I've, the way I've right. tried to medicate myself mm -hmm. and help myself. It did, it didn't work. Right. Finally, I get here. I'm beat to, I'm beat down to nothing. I feel like, and that's what it took for me to not, you know, hang on to this messed up stuff from, from years of, of just, being the end of my environment and um, letting go of that. Mm -hmm. Right, right. That's great. The you know when you think about these steps one, two, three, you get the impression that you're putting something together, almost like right, like following the directions at at putting together a shelf or a, you know a, a car or whatever. Um, and and so you get to this point of doing step six. Is it just a one-time thing? You finally do step six, and now I'm done on step seven. And how does this step six become more than just a one step and done kind of thing? Is it an ongoing process in your life? Yes, it is definitely for me because it's taking it's taking time, and I see where it's going to keep. It's going to keep. I'll keep evolving as a Christian, um, and I see you know. From my, my short time here, that it's been uh, things come up mm -hmm. in my life. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have faced new things. I, you know, I've never bought a car on my own. I've never, 
you know, take, take care of getting my driver's license back. And, um, the, the things, you know, the stepping out in fear mm -hmm. of, of doing things has been, um, uh, uh, things come up, mm -hmm. you know, right. different, I, I come to different challenges mm -hmm. right. and I have to, they, they, and then I find different v defects. Right, right. Right. To work on. Right. To become a, the man I'd like to be that would right. be pleasing to Jesus. Right. Because you have these new events happen and you find yourself reacting back like that five-year-old again. And you go, whoa, where would that come from? Oh, there's another defect I need to begin to deal with. I need to expose that, put that out in the light and let God walk me through that new challenge. And so it's an ongoing it's process. It's an ongoing thing. Right. It's not just a one-time check that box, move on to the next I one. Know. It's learning how to do this step and do it in an ongoing basis in a community that loves and accepts and affirms and gives you the the environment the climate in which to encourage and, that and that, yeah thing. that's another thing that's been big for me is the encouragement from from people that um want to see me succeed mm -hmm. um that's uh, because the you know in this with that i have developed i've learned to trust mm -hmm. some people mm -hmm. and if i can trust some people then I get that encouragement and, and I can take those steps and, and uh, work on this thing that has suddenly come up. And I realize, you know, this isn't part of the new man that I'd like to be. Mm -hmm. I, I want to get, I want to do something about this. Mm -hmm. So I, I take the next necessary step. Right. And I do that because of people who help me see these things mm -hmm. and encourage me to, 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 to walk through them. Right. To, you know, because I, I still get scared. I still don't know what to do and and don't realize what's happening. And I'll have some, the, the my environment of the, the, the people I choose to call, call, call friends today are people who will tell me, Todd, is this something, you know, that's come up that's, you know, causing some problems mm -hmm. with you or something. Mm -hmm. Well, there's that trust. And, right. and yeah, there is something. Right. And, and it helps me to work on something else about me right. that I don't realize is there. Mm -hmm. As I get, as I, as times went on, different things are, you know, more, sometimes more complicated things sure. come up. Right, and right. It's, it's, it's an ongoing thing. Right. And I can have to surrender daily. Right, right. That's good. That's great. You know, I guess in wrapping up, and I, you've shared some great insights, and I appreciate that. I hope all of us, I know I've gained some appreciation for this step from the things that you have shared with us. Um, maybe you can just kind of end. I'd like to hear a little bit about where you're at today, where you see yourself going as this new Todd begins to blossom and come out. What kind of hopes and aspirations you have as you look into your future? Well, um, you know, I've, I've I worked at the Saving Way for about a year and a half. Which is our thrift store, right? The thrift stores. Um, and that's, that was a, a big thing mm -hmm. that, that helped me is, is a, you know, being around people, just being getting, getting comfortable with me. Mm -hmm. and, and at the same time, doing something for somebody else mm -hmm. daily. Right. And, and now um, I work uh, at his way. Um, uh, I'm one of the uh, campus leaders assistants, I think mm -hmm. is my title. But anyway, I work up on the desk and help the guys uh, usually on a daily basis on just different things, needs that, that I could, you know, get if it's just whatever. And that's the, the, that's been something I haven't done that long, but I can see where it's it's it's. It's very beneficial. Hopefully, I'm, I'm being helpful to, to a lot of these guys here. Mm -hmm. and it's, But at the same time, I, I feel like, you know, I'm getting so much more out of this than I, I could possibly ever give back mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because of, of me evolving the way I, I'm trying to. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to keep doing that. I want to keep, you know, for me, a big thing I have learned, being service-minded, trying to stay, uh, keep a mindset of being in service. Mm -hmm. um, 
is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. It is what brings me happiness. It is what um, is, it helps me more than I think I can ever give back. But I hopefully I, I'll, I'll struggle daily to try to give back and, and, and help as much as I can. But this, this, I'm not sure where this is going to take me, but right now, um, I, I'm, I couldn't be happier mm -hmm. what I'm doing. Right. Working here. Yeah. I mean, part of the beauty of it, right, is part of this process of surrendering to God is even surrendering our future. We don't know exactly. We love what we're doing right now. We don't know where it's going to take us, but I'm in God's hands and I'm confident and that he's going to take me somewhere great. I've looked, gotten that trust in God because what he showed me so far has right. been, been like magic in my life. Right. Right. Well, Todd, I appreciate you sharing with us today and thank you for listening and watching today. If you'd like to learn more about His Way, you can check out our website at hiswayinc.org.